Hey guys, welcome back to Heiko Shaves. We are again down in my garage. This time we are not fixing a pearl flexi, but we're fixing a shaving brush. I bought a package deal, a used um, Mercur Progress, I believe, the short handle version. You haven't even seen that yet. Uh, together with a stand and a shaving brush. And unfortunately, when I dropped it out of this package here, it says Frank shaving on it. I don't know much about it. it. Doesn't say where it was made. There's some Chinese characters on it. So yeah, um, it came out of the packaging like this. It's used for sure. I can see that there's some soap residue in this knot. So I wasn't really upset about it. I wanted to try this anyways. So I bought a new 24 millimeter knot from DS Cosmetics. So we're gonna take this one out even though it's in pretty good shape. We're gonna reuse the handle here. And uh, so here is the new knot. I'm gonna keep it protected until we have it glued in here. And there is a lot of glue residue at the bottom of this handle here. And of course we want to remove this. So I bought myself, believe it or not, I have all kinds of machinery, but I don't have a set of Forstner bits. So I bought myself a 24 millimeter Forstner bit. It almost wants to fit in here. It's a little tight, but we're going to drill this out. Uh, let me change camera angle and get stuff out of the way. And then we're going to get started. It shouldn't be too complicated. So here's my, uh, drill press vise. I have some plastic or rubber uh, jaws so that we're not going to damage this handle here. So we're just going to put it in here, tighten it down really well. We're not going to crush this handle, I don't think. Um, like that, yeah. So that the force that built will not rip it out of here. And then we just need to put the force a bit into Oh, wrong way. Into my chuck. And tighten that up. And then let's check what kind of speed we have going here. So let's see if we can get this lined up. I hope the, there's a cutout in those jaws that kind of help to put stuff into the jaws here straight. Let's see if we can. Let's line it up like that first. Like that, okay. like the rest of the epoxy I'm assuming they used epoxy just broke up now nah. oh, let's do that one more time doesn't hurt All right, that looks good. I should have lined it up and then bolted down the vise here on the table so it doesn't slide around. So we nick the top here a little bit. But as you can see, now you can see the material pattern down below. That means we have all the old glue out. I'm gonna wash this out with some rubbing alcohol, isopropyl alcohol. And then we're gonna be on the bench behind me and we're gonna mix up some epoxy and glue the new knot right in there. 
let's move. So I uh, made myself a little workspace here. Here's our brush handle. I'm going to use some 91% isopropyl alcohol. The surface should be rough enough um, to be a good substrate for an adhesion because we just drilled it out with a Forstner bit. It has all kinds of rattle marks. So this should be holding on to um, the handle pretty well. So I'm just going to clamp them here into my bench vise in the same jaws that we just used. Just move them over. And I'm going to grab the DS Cosmetic knot. You see the, the glue that they use is really shiny. So that's probably not going to hang on really well. Let me grab a piece of uh, sandpaper and rough this up a little bit. So some people use silicone, bathroom silicone, to glue those knots in. Uh, I, I would understand if it's like a vintage handle that you definitely want to preserve. This one is a no-name made in China handle that we're putting a no-name knot into. I mean, DS Cosmetic is definitely no-name. This here is 320 grit sandpaper. I just want to not damage the, uh, the knot. So I, that's why I keep this clear plastic around it. But just roughing up the surface a little bit. Then we're going to grab our rubbing alcohol wipe and at least get the dust off. So I know uh, the story of the blue masking tape here is if I work with epoxy, I like to squeeze it on something and then mix it up on there. Then I do my thing. And once I'm done, I just rip off this masking tape and throw it away. Let me grab some stir sticks. Brought you a little closer. So what I use is um, wooden Q-tips. Uh, I use them here in the shop for all kinds of purposes, cleaning carburetors, little nooks and crannies, whatever cleaning, and also as stir sticks. So I just put a pair there, pair in my hand. We have a uh, cheap Harbor Freight clear epoxy. This is clear. Oh, and there's already residue falling off. We don't want that. So we're gonna put a blob of A and a blob of B on here, kind of roughly the same size like that and then we're just going to mix it up mix 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 you just go for it until you think it's fine uh, this says quick set epoxy that doesn't mean it sets quick it takes a while so and then I could have used some masking tape around the opening of the brush handle but we're not going to do that I'm just going to Take a blob here and twist it, go into the opening, I hope you guys can see, and put a blob in here. And then I'm going to grab another blob and put it in here. We don't need to really go up the sides or anything, it's going to squeeze out anyways. So we're going to grab a little more, I don't like the smell of epoxy very much. but. So just like that, there is a little bit of a hump in there. And that's pretty much it. And now we're gonna grab our just cleaned up and scuffed up knot there and stick it right into the fresh epoxy. And we don't wanna squeeze it in there until it comes all the way out because we ultimately don't wanna see the glue. Here in this case, it's clear glue. Ah, oh, you know what? I see that the end of the knot isn't really super straight, so let's put a little bit more epoxy in there. And then maybe we can put a little bit of leftover here at the bottom. Like that. So the knot is All right, maybe I need to take this plastic off because I can't really push on the knot with the plastic. All right, so I don't see anything squeezing out, but I'm definitely in the soup down there. Um, what I didn't show you on 
uh, video is how I checked the depth of this handle, the drilled out opening. We didn't make it any deeper with the force snap bit. We only removed the old glue. And I made sure that, um, here, let's, let me show you real quick. The, the factory glue application on the knot down here, you wanna make sure that that at least disappears in the handle or else you have to just drill it a little deeper. So if, if you get a knot that has a really thick glue layer down here and you can still see this ugly glue, then you have to drill out the hole a little deeper. So I checked that while you guys weren't looking. But yeah, this, this worked here really well. So the knot is all the way in there. Um, since those knots usually have a little bit of some backbone, you can just grab it like this, push it down, and then once it's in the glue, like I said, you don't need super huge amounts of glue. As long as it touches it and kind of squishes out a little bit, you don't want your silicone or your epoxy to ooze out. And yeah, now quick set, I would say it's probably gonna take about 24 hours. So in 24 hours, we, we shall meet again. I'm just gonna leave it like this. Don't touch it. Or maybe I take it out of my vise here real quick and show you. And now I'm just going to find a safe spot to park it like that and let it dry and cure. And that's it. And all this can be thrown away. The other two Q-tips I didn't even use. And the weight of the, the knot will push down a little bit more, sits right on the glue and will cure. All right, I'll see you in 24 hours. Hey guys, we're back down in the garage. The epoxy has had 24 hours to set up. So this quick set epoxy here from Harbor Freight is supposed to set up in five minutes um, to be handled, but to really gain full strength, you have to leave it alone for 24 hours. This here is a 24 millimeter knot made by DS Cosmetics. It's pure badger. So, you know, looks pretty nice. I guess the color scheme kind of matches the handle. Frank shaving, as I uh, showed you yesterday. Um, I don't know anything about this brand. I just got it in a package deal with a razor in a stand and uh, the knot had fallen out. So now we have freshly epoxied in there. I'm yanking on it pretty good. And uh, some people, like I said, they use bathroom silicone to be able to pull the knot out if you ever want to replace the knot. Here in this case, what I would do is just cut off all the bristles and then drill it out with a Forstner bit, the 24 millimeter that we used yesterday. So that's it. A little bit of $5 epoxy, $5.99 Harbor Freight, and a knot from AliExpress made by DS Cosmetic was necessary to fix this brush. And now I actually have a Badger brush, which I don't think I own. I have a bunch of synthetic. I have a bore brush made by Wilkinson. And I have the little brush that came with a Parasso travel kit. I don't even know what kind of bristles. I think that is also bore. Um, and now I have a Badger. And look at this beautiful thing. I know the background is not very beautiful, but the brush handle and, you know, it came together pretty well. And I didn't mess it up. No gooping of epoxy on the side. So this is pretty cool. I like it. That was an easy fix. And uh, I'll leave a link down below and the price on the screen. I don't remember what the 24 millimeter Badger not cost from AliExpress, but I'll put it on the screen right now and all the details in the description down below. So this is how easy it is to fix an old shaving brush and replace the knot. Alrighty guys, and that's it. See you in the next one.